All right, so we're ready to, to tackle um, the overall general problem uh, of this section, and that's to find all real and imaginary zeros of the given polynomial. Now, when you're told to do this, uh, we, we outlined the steps a few minutes ago, uh, and the first step is very important. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this polynomial and you're going to set it equal to zero. Um, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to solve. Now, we always want to try to solve things the easiest way possible. Um, so no matter how the polynomial might look, the first thing we should always try to do is factor it. See if the polynomial factors using one of your uh, earlier techniques, your more traditional techniques, such as even grouping. Um, you can try, for example, in this case we have four terms, so, so factoring by grouping might be a, um, an honest attempt. Uh, so once we determine if it factors or doesn't factor uh, traditionally, um, this is the time when we would need to decide how to move forward. So in this case, it doesn't factor directly, so we would need to move forward uh, using a different method. Now, in the last example we worked, um, I gave you x equals 3. I said test to see if x equals 3 is a 0 of the polynomial. Now, we clearly don't have uh, any numbers in front of us uh, that we're told to try, so it's up to us to figure out what we need to use. Uh, that's where the rational zero theorem will come in. The rational zero theorem puts together a list of all possible rational zeros. Uh, so not all of the numbers in our list will work. Um, in fact, uh, there could be irrational zeros out there that we don't even see, um, but the rational zero theorem will be a great place to start. So to work, the work through the rational zero theorem, uh, the last number, the, the constant all by itself, we're going to call that p, and the leading coefficient we're going to call q. So the rational th zero theorem says to take p over q, which in our case would be a 5 over 4, list out the factors of 5 and the factors of 4. Now, to actually construct the list, we're going to start with the 1 on top, and we're going to come down and, and kind of pair it with all of the numbers on bottom. So for example, we would have a 1 over 1, a 1 over 2, and a 1 over 4. Similarly, we would take the 5 on top and we'd pair it with all the numbers below. Similarly, 5 over 1, 5 over 2, and 5 over 4. So this list right here, uh, in addition to having the plus or minus as an option, would be the list of possible rational zeros for the given polynomial. So from here, we take any number and we try to see if it's a zero. We go back picking a number to the yes or no type question. Uh, so generally speaking, it's always a safe bet to just to try number one uh, to see if it gets you anywhere. So using our synthetic division, uh, we'll take our coefficients here, four, negative 10, four and five, bring down the four, multiply and add. Multiply and add multiply and add. And since this number is non-zero, we can see that x equals 1 is not a zero of the polynomial. Okay, so that didn't work. We would try something else. We might try negative 1. We might try 1 half, negative 1 half. You might be able to uh, think it's a little bit random, and, and to a certain extent it is, um, and I'll try to help you with that a little bit later. Um, but for sake of, of saving time, um, let's suppose that we try uh, x equals negative 1 half. So if I take my 4, my negative 10, 4 and 5, bringing down the 4, negative 1 half times 4 would give us a negative 2. We add, we multiply, we add, we multiply. And you can see now, with a remainder of 0, that tells us that x equals negative 1 half is a 0 of the polynomial. Okay? Now, we'll need to keep moving forward with this. Uh, again, the, we're fortunate to have the 4, the negative 12, and the 10. So my quotient of 4x squared minus 12x plus 10 
is the remaining part in which I need to find uh, the remaining zeros. So I'll go ahead and I'll set that equal to zero. Uh, and now it's quadratic. I would certainly never use a synthetic division uh, on a quadratic polynomial. I've got too many other options that are far easier. Um, so if this is what we have, um, I would probably go ahead first and divide by two uh, to make my numbers a little more manageable. So 2x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. And now at this point, um, again, let's see if it factors directly. If it doesn't, we can always use the quadratic formula or complete the square. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like this one factors directly. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, complete the square on this. Uh, and to tell you what, I'll move over here and do that to save a little bit of room. Now, if we're going to complete the square, we have to make sure the leading coefficient is a positive 1. So I'll go ahead and also divide everything by 2. Uh, that'll give me an x squared minus 3x uh, plus 5 halves equals 0. I'll move some things around. And I'll put in my blank. So half of 3 is 3 halves. And I'll need to square it. If I put a 3 half squared on the left, I need to put a 3 half squared on the right. So the left side will factor into x minus 3 half squared. Uh, and on the right hand side, we've got a negative 5 halves plus 9 fourths. So to build up our LCD, I'll need to multiply a 2 over 2 here, which would be a negative. 10 fourths plus 9 fourths, which would just be a negative 1 fourth. Um, at this point, we can go ahead and square root both sides. So we have an x minus 3 halves equals plus or minus uh, 1 half i. And finally, x equals 3 halves plus or minus one half i for our final answer. So it looks like uh, we have the boxed in blue solutions in addition to now the boxed in blue solution of x equals negative one half. So if we were told to find all real and imaginary zeros, uh, we have done just that. Uh, to start things out, it was a little bit of trial and error through synthetic division, but once we found one of the zeros, uh, notice how it dropped down to a quadratic, in which case we can use um, earlier methods and much easier methods um, to solve moving forward. And I'd also like you to notice now that there were three uh, answers, or three zeros to the original polynomial. Um, and this is supported in the nth root theorem. Uh, sometimes you'll hear the word root and zero used interchangeably. So the nth root theorem says that a polynomial of degree n will have n roots. Uh, for example, we have a degree 3 polynomial, and we came up with three different answers. Uh, so a polynomial of degree n will have n roots. Um, under the condition that we, we, we um, look into multiplicity. So I'll say here, a polynomial of degree n will have n roots when multiplicity is considered. <clears throat> now, it's not really difficult to, to see this. Uh, if we take a, a simple example, uh, if I take y equals x squared, um, and I say find all real and imaginary zeros, well, the first thing you would do is you would set it equal to zero. Um, and then if we were to solve this, uh, it's pretty evident that x equals zero. But when we truly do factor this completely, you can see that x would equal zero twice. So we could conclude that x would equal zero with multiplicity of 2, satisfying the nth root theorem.